Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from j &H Aerospace. This is the build video for the Super Cats Meow. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction. Uh, we are the purveyors of the very popular Cats Meow kit, which is a very nice uh, entry-level F1N indoor hand launch glider, uh, also usable for catapult launch and so on. So these have been a very, very popular airplane. They are based, of course, off of the Mikhail Yashinsky gliders, which are very, very good and very competitive. They, their reputation is, is very strong worldwide, and they are holders of several records across Europe and, and elsewhere. So, very good quality uh, airplane, and a lot of you have been requesting these. So, the purpose of the Super Cats Meow is to provide a domestic American version of that aircraft. And so this airplane is within one gram of that aircraft, provides all of the full features of it. And the one that you're about to see in the build video, which is this one, does not have the tapered flaps. These are, are constant thickness flaps in here. What you will be building in the build video, how, uh, well, in your kit, however, is an aircraft that does have tapered flaps. So they're just like the flaps on the Yashinsky glider. They're just from a slightly different material. It's about the same density. So the Yashinsky gliders use a, a, a gray foam. We have blue foam here in the U.S. that's, that's essentially the same. You've got your, um, your, your earplug bumper on the nose, catapult hook, um, a little forward grip that is used for, for gripping the airplane when you're launching. I have currently broken my, my uh, rear hand grip off. Um, alternatively, you can do the wingtip launch, which is popular in Europe. And most importantly, if you use Gorilla CA, it is compatible with these blue foam flaps. So in the build video, you'll see me using 30-minute epoxy. But you can use this stuff with Bob Smith Foam Safe CA Accelerator. Make sure that, that you have that. That's the only accelerator I've tested with this foam, so we have to be brand specific for now. Otherwise, you're basically running your own chemical experiments. But if you follow the instructions in this kit, you'll have an airplane that builds to under 9 grams and is very, very competitive in United States indoor hand launch and unlimited catapult uh, contests up into uh, mid-range category 2 contest uh, sites and um, also is usable for F1N competition which is not wingspan limited. And that's where I do want to show you one last thing as you're getting, race, getting started into this video. This airplane, if you can see, is considerably, considerably larger than what you're building. And why it's relevant is this is built with the same flaps that you will be using in your actual kit. And you can see that they are they are stiff enough even for this larger glider. So you do have the ability to sand them down. If you are not uh, really experienced in building indoor flap gliders, I don't recommend sanding the flaps. But you do have that option if you are one of the those expert class flyers who have contacted me saying, hey, I need a way to get these. Um, so so that's that's an option that is, is provided to you. Um, I should mention this airplane actually uses the same fuselage as what's used on the, uh, on the Super Cats Meow. So one other thing I will mention in the video, we do show sanding the fuselage. If you are willing to take the time, you can sand this fuselage down pretty close to one gram. Um, I did not take the time to do that, but I in the kit, you know, you open the kit, the fuselage is, is a little under two grams, and you can sand it down a little bit further from there. So this airplane weighs uh, 8.5 grams, which is pretty good weight, but you can get that weight down farther. Um, the stock Yashinsky glider right here, and this is a, a very good one. This was one that Bill Gowan picked out for me. Um, this is 7.6 grams, so just for comparison. This one's just a little under a gram heavier than this one. Um, and they get fairly similar flight times, quite honestly. So um, you'll, you'll see in the flight demos 
uh, that will be linked elsewhere. Uh, you'll, you'll see this airplane doing over 30 seconds in a um, fairly average Category 1 flying site. Uh, and that's from hand launch. And remember, that's the, this is the original one with the floppy flaps as opposed to what you'll have, which is basically the equivalent of the Yashinsky gliders. So with that, um, that should conclude the intro. That should give you an idea of, of what you're about to build. And so I turn you over to the build video for this aircraft with just the, the reminder that you don't have to use 30-minute epoxy because you get this stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about what's in your kit. Uh, this is pre-production, so I'm not going to go into any of the fancy details, what have you. Um, you're going to have some uh, tail surfaces. Uh, your hooks are not going to look like this, and you'll see me cutting these out in the video because um, this is not the, the final version. Uh, you'll have a dihedral gauge. Not, not, no big deal there. Uh, you get your set of wing tips, and yours will not have a little hole burnt out there. Um, this is your, I can get a hold of it, your vertical, uh, well, your rudder, um, the movable part of your vertical stab. Um, and these are your wings, of course. You have a, uh, an ear plug for the uh, front bumper, carbon uh, fuselage, and some sort of wing uh, flaps that look sort of like this. They won't be joined like that. Like I said, this is pre production, so is what it is. So we're going to get started uh, by assembling the wings so that we can get the flaps on as early as possible. I'm using 30-minute um, epoxy. That's the fastest securing stuff I've got here. Let me say, what do you mean by that? That means I've got stuff that takes several hours, has hours of pot life. So, um, anyway, we'll see how all that goes together. So, first thing you're going to do is pull out your wing flaps. And we'll go ahead and get this set of wingtip goodies over here while we're at it. Pop out the razor blade. And actually, I'm not even going to do that. We're just going to pop these out because I do good laser cutting. And that means they pop out pretty good. And we'll do the same thing with the wingtips. We'll leave the pylon pieces behind. And never mind the uh, toddler knocking all, of them, all my tools over. And so grab a sanding block. These uh, inside edges are the only ones we're concerned about right now. Just take the burrs off of them. Same here. These um, flat mating surfaces are the ones that we're concerned about. Caleb, can you please get my cup? Thank you. And just put the sanding on the inside there. Like that. Thank you, Caleb. Put that right there. Okay, so we'll arrange these on out. Like so, and like so. And like so. And probably don't use as much glue as I do because I'm glue happy. I'm used to building stuff for which there is a minimum weight because I've been doing all the Science Olympiad stuff and I forgot one surface that you need to sand a burr off of. Now these uh, tips are from thinner balsa so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you hold those down flat like so. And what that also means is that when we reassemble, well, that when we assemble this, we also have to be concerned about not building two right wings or two left wings. This is a left wing because these are upside down right now. All right, I'm going to put this one together and then we'll be back on camera. Uh, we got wings here. Um, 
So before we get into the whole, the whole epoxy thing, we're going to do a little bit of uh, prep work on this wing. So we want to flare all of this in, um, kind of a gradual flaring in of the thickness. So. tips down real nice and don't do what I just did which is what I do on virtually every glider I build which is plane off a piece of a wing tip and add more weight and then wonder why I can't set glider records To be clear, I have never set a glider record, nor have I ever even come remotely close to setting one. Anyway, sand that down real good. Um, also, you're going to want to come around on the inside here, just taking off material here to come down close to the thickness of your flaps. Uh, the main goal here is we're just trying to remove weight to get this guy fairly light. Because um, chances are you're flying in a Cat 1 site, um, and so you don't need a whole lot of structural strength. take off a little bit more here. on sanding the top of the wing until after we've attached the flaps. Um, you're going to come around here, so remember we're upside down. we we'll do the same thing on this wing, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have the uh, wings done, and we're going to bring our flaps in here, and go around with the razor blade, and gently free these up. Handle these very carefully because this foam is much more fragile than what we use in the regular Cat's Meow. And with that, this part. <clears throat> All right, and there we have two sets of flaps, or two pairs, a pair of flaps, something like that. All right. So that's how those are going to go together on your wings, and like so. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some epoxy and we'll uh, get started on that. Okay, what I'm working with here is Bob Smith 30-minute uh, epoxy. Um, five minute, you can use five minutes. Uh, it's a little bit quick to work with. Um, Fifteen minute is probably the optimum. Um, but I mean, if you're if you're used to working quickly, five minute would be fine. So I'm gonna just squirt a little in here. We don't need a whole lot. Due to the way we're doing this, uh, really fancy epoxies are really unnecessary in this case. So that's one of the nice things about this build, is we're not laminating anything. All we're doing is attaching all of this together. All right, so once you've got your epoxy thoroughly mixed, I mean, I've got barely enough in here to cover the, the bottom, so let this be clear. Um, and really, if you're smart, you'll be doing this with gloves on, because this stuff is not is not good for you. Because yeah. the best way to do this is to actually smear this on with a, a gloved finger. But I'm in a hurry, because I'm always in a hurry. Yeah, so I'm going to do it this way. My assistant thinks that by bringing gloves in here, she can get me to wear gloves like a smart person. So far, I'm resisting. And if you notice, we're trying to use as little of this as possible. Sorry, I'm out of frame here, as is my default position when it comes to camera work. Okay, so now we've got our flap epoxied up. What I'm going to recommend you do is set the flap down and bring the wing to it so you don't smear epoxy everywhere. Notice we're on parchment paper, so that's something to notice. Um, also, the, uh, we've still got the wings upside down. And I just got epoxy on my fingers, like an idiot. And so you're just going to want to leave that there. It, you, know, you can't work with it for some time yet. Uh, somebody's probably going to ask, why can't I use Yuhu Pour? If you're building this, do not be using Yuhu Pour, because it's not stiff enough for what you want to get out of this airplane. It just will not, I mean, you can make it work, um, but you'll not you'll never see the, the potential of the aircraft. All right, I'm going to attach the other flap here, and then we'll uh, pull them back. All right, so we got our flaps just kind of sitting there, and um, yeah, sitting there. So, in the meantime, we will work on other parts of the aircraft. So, with your fuselage, um, the back part of the fuselage is um, about the right stiffness. I mean, it, it's still a little overheal, but this area in particular, even up front, uh, really is much thicker than it needs to be. So I recommend to take a piece of sandpaper and preferably do this outside instead of what I'm doing. And sand this thing down a little. Um, don't sand it a whole lot, but at least I uh, get all of the gloss off because that's nothing but epoxy that you don't really need in here. Because um, we're trying to get this airplane down to a, a competitive weight. The fuselage weighs about 2 grams, uh, but it's optimal to get it down lower. 
Um, it is possible to get these fuselages to uh, below 1.5 if you want to um, put it in a uh, carefully put it in a drill chuck and um, rotary sand it down. Uh, but the, the bottom line is you do want to get some of this excess weight off and that this gets you that much better of an aircraft. So I'm not going to do all of this on camera and I'm not going to sand mine down a huge amount, um, but it's something you should consider. So we'll be back when I'm done making a mess. Okay, so I finished making a mess with the uh, carbon everywhere. Now we're going to look at tail surfaces. So go ahead and pop out your horizontal tail. And you start off by sanding off any burrs on it. Um, we will probably have changed the tip outlines here by the time you get these. I do recommend kind of round it off a little bit. Um, at this point, sand this down very thin. Um, you want to taper the thickness out, but the, the bottom line is you get it good and thin. And don't be like me and get full of carbon dust. Um, there are a variety of good ways to sand this, but the bottom line is you get it sanded down good. Um, we're trying to save as much weight as possible there. And that's one half of the stab. I don't know if you can see how. Well, anyway, it's very nice and thin out here as compared to there. So, okay, so I finished fiddling with the um, stab here. Got a lot of weight out of it. Now, the thing I'm going to recommend is go ahead and take a razor blade across that notch there. Kind of split the stab. Um, you who have uh, like Duco glue on hand, I recommend using that. I'm going to show it using CA because not all of you will have Duco. And just go ahead and secure this. But we're also going to do something else while we're securing that. I go ahead and bring the horizontal tail or the tail rim. So we've got about that much dihedral. That's all you really need. And put this flush with the end of your tail boom. And there you go, just like that. Alright, next we're going to assemble our vertical tail. Now you want to be a little, you want to figure out what launch method you're going to use before you sand this. So if you're going to be sidearm launching this, Euro style, um, do not sand your vertical tail down too much uh, because it's going to be withstanding some or subjected to some fairly significant side loads, and those are um, capable of just shearing the, the tail right off. Um, so, remove any burrs here. Uh, since I am going to be hand launching mine, and I've not decided I'm not going to sidearm it, I'm just going to round off the um, leading edge a little bit here. And then, sorry, there's a crazy chicken in the uh, rubber chicken, mind you, in the living room. Alright, and we're going to take our um, Foam vertical tail, and since notice I'm using CA because this is your little Grotner vector board that is CA safe.
Now, mine is naturally curved a little bit to the right, which is handy because I like to fly my indoor gliders to the right. Um, I am going to sand the back, this part here, um, where it meets the flap down, just for a little bit more streamlining because it makes me feel better about the plane. And you know my mantra, if I feel better about the plane, chances are I'll fly it better. And now, all we're going to do is get that with a touch of glue, and we're going to install it on our fuselage. And again, if you're right-handed um, and you are planning to fly it to the right, because you can fly this either direction, um, regardless of what hand you are, um, you know, I've got mine set up with some... I don't know how well that's in it. Yeah, so you've got some right rudder deflection there. Now, since our, our wings are still drying, we'll go ahead and we'll do some more assembly here. So we'll install the pylon next. There we go. And so the pylon is two pieces. And pay real close attention because they are tapered in one direction. And so you notice I turn them over. So it's taller at this end than at this end. That's important because this is your leading edge. You want some positive incidence in this uh, pylon. So I'm going to laminate these two together. Maybe. I'm going to try to laminate these two together. inch tall pylon. Again, thicker at this end than at this end. You may have to measure that because it's not entirely obvious. It's just a slight positive incidence to make the airplane a little more stable. And just rounding the pylon off a little bit. Probably not necessary, but um, what is somewhat necessary is to groove in down here on the bottom of the pylon so that it uh, fits the radius of the fuselage a little better. And then we'll check. Yes, indeed. Now, I don't have measurements handy, but the uh, plans for the Shinsky glider are on our website, so you can use them for spacing the uh, pylon. Um, you'll also have drawings in your kit showing where to put the pylon. Bottom line is, uh, measured out. And then, what is important, and you won't be able to see me doing this quite as well as I'd like, but you do want to make sure this is oriented uh, properly relative to the tail. We don't want any stab tilt whatsoever. Because stab tilt in indoor gliders, uh, or low ceiling gliders, um, not, really, uh, not really good friends. So, there you go. Alright, lastly, um, what you will have in your kit It'll be a set of hooks that look something like this. Hang on a second, let me cut them out here. And they'll have the grain oriented better too. Um, because I did not orient the grain correctly on these, because like I said, they're stock cat's meow uh, hooks that are a tri ply type thing. But anyway, you're going to end up with something that looks like that. So I'm going to laminate these two pieces together. Maybe a one piece, uh, one sixteenth thing in your kit with the uh, um, other assemblages there. Um, maybe something, I'll probably have it be something separate um, because you want it to be from somewhat harder wood. But anyway. 
Now we're going to take that, we're going to set it aside for a minute. We're going to find that ear plug. These gliders tend to come out nose heavy, so what we're going to do is the nose heavy after putting the plug in place. So we're going to cut about 3 eighths of an inch off the back of that. And now it doesn't want to expand out, that's okay. That's the beauty of a good uh, ear plug. That's what makes them great for our um, airplanes here. Anyway, while it's doing that, see if you can cut a little bit out of the back of it. You may want to take a drill bit or something to do this. And we'll be back when it expands out, I think. Yeah, maybe. There we go. Bottom line is, we want to glue this into the nose real good, like that. So we want it to sink in there just a little bit. So hit it with some CA. And stick our little nose plug on the front. Try to line it up so it doesn't mess up the airflow and whatnot too much. And there's our nose front thing. Bumper, that's the term. Alright, now we're going to take our, um, we're going to put some glue on the bottom here so that we can attach our catapult hook. Now, if you're planning only to fly hand launch with this, then you won't need the catapult hook. But catapult hook installed, and remember the pylons on top. There we go. The catapult hook's on the bottom. Try not to angle it off to the side like I did. One last part that I forgot to bring out is the uh, rear grip. Again, if you're flying only hand launch, you don't need this. And you can sand this down a little bit to just remove that much more weight from, from the back. You're not going to put a huge amount of tension on this little guy. Unless you're flying cat 2, uh, high cat 2s, which my, I doubt this glider is really going to reach up to the top of high cat 2s. But anyway, we are going to glue it up here in front of the um, horizontal tail. Out right there. Use your judgment what um, what has worked before for you if you've uh, built several of these. And again, if you're applying this as a hand launch model uh, only, you don't need the finger grip. And so, there it is. So we're done until we get the uh, the wings dried, and then we'll go from there. Alright, let me check. Yeah, the epoxy is starting to thicken up, but it's got a ways to go. So we'll come back uh, in probably an hour. Okay, back to that. Um, anyway, I'm just looking to save weight anywhere I can, and if that includes sanding off a little bit of the pylon, that's cool. Um, so, we've got that done. Uh, our epoxy has hardened up. It's kind of tacky, but uh, as you can hear it doing that, so you know it's, it's tacky, but it, it's hardened up enough for us to work with it, mainly because I'm impatient and i got to fly now because i got to fly now. Because, you know. I don't. Wow, so much hate. All right, so remember these are the bottoms of your wings. Um, and I've got a part of mine that did not stick, so if you're like me, you'll have to go back and fix that with more epoxy or something or another. Um, but that type of thing does happen. I'll try it and sand off a little bit up here. 
epoxy doesn't always sand exceptionally well, but got a little rubber right there. Get rid of that, um, and we're good to go on the bottom. And we'll check the other wing. Everything looks good on it. And I'm just trying to clean off a little bit where the excess epoxy is on here. And my flap didn't line up perfectly up here. And that's not how to do that. Let's see where to put my razor blade. There we go. So that's got all of that, so we'll flip these over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my razor plane and I'm going to do just a, a bevel on the leading edge, bring it down nice and sharp, just like on the Yashinsky gliders. But before I do that, let me remove all the burring on the leading edge of the wing. I need a fairly smooth leading edge to start from. And there we go. And since we're fairly thin out here, I'm not going to go all the way around there. That's got us fairly close down there. The rest of it I'm going to do with sandpaper. So all I'm doing is creating this, um, I don't know how well it shows up, but I'm just creating a bevel here. That's the only airfoil on the leading edge I'm doing. And I'm not rounding this off, I'm just doing a, a straight bevel. Um, what the, the best airfoil is for these, I'm not certain. Um, but if this, if that's what the Europeans are using, I'm going with it. And you say, why? Because they get longer flights than I do. I guess I should show doing the uh, wing tip here, so at this point we're just kind of feathering everything in here, all the way around here. decent leading edge all the way around. Wing is decently stiff. Everything looks good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and split the tips apart. Um, we'll do that right around here. You do want that um, to be a fairly uh, straight line. I'm just going parallel off of that seam there. Since you won't have that on yours, you'll want to measure it. Um, so there's that one. And now, making sure we keep them right side up, we'll do the uh, right wing. So we'll be back once I'm done with it. Okay, so we've got both of these wings done, so we're going to join them up. Um, go ahead and pop your dihedral gauges out. I'm going to show you the way I always do it because it's the way I always do it, which is to. Nope, oh, sorry. Off frame. Lame. And we'll 
take the wings here, bevel them slightly at the roots. Make sure you haven't rounded it off any. And verify. Nope, rounded that one off. Oopsies. Now they mate a little bit better. I think it's on this one too. Better. Alright, get that thing flat. Get this with some glue. Hydro gauge in. And there we go. All done on that part. Cool beans. We'll sand a flat in here in preparation for mounting it. And then slide our thing back. And we'll put this on the table here. And do our usual, let me raise the camera angle, there we go, our usual little rubby thingy here. And that gives us some flap curvature. I'm so used to the vector foam, it doesn't curve as nicely as this stuff does. That's actually a little too much. I'm about equal. And there we go. And not too much floppy floppy, a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're mount it up here like that. Like that. And you'll want to make sure well, we'll turn it upside down. You want to make sure that there's no stab tilt, so like that. You can see the tail tilting back there in the background. Me wiggling it. You want it parallel. So, and of course you also want it aligned correctly, which is actually slightly more important. So we'll put some CA on it. There we go. Something straight, and now check. Alignment. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now your CG should go right about here, um, if not slightly forward to that. And I'm going to check. I know you can't see this on camera. But I'm actually showing. We're so slightly nose heavy. So I'm CGing right about there. All right. Now, one thing I notice is I've got a flat dragon. So we're going to turn the airplane over. If you have this, you don't you don't want this. This is not not good. Um, I'm going to come in here and trim that away a little bit. dragging just slightly. Test and see how it goes. Okay, so you can see now how everything goes, and hopefully this will glide all right, except it nosedives straight into the floor. So that means we need a whole bunch of up trim, which is not uncommon on these. 
Hopefully for the production versions, I'll build in enough positive incidents in the pylon, you won't need quite this much. Alright. Nope, still acting quirky. So let's bend some wash out into the tips, and my flap tip there is still coming loose. I kind of tacked it in with the tacky epoxy, but... Anyway, because I think we got some wing flex interfering here too. All right, try once more. Looking better, still going a little bit terminal there at the end. Yeah, on the production versions, we'll add some pylon incidents, wing incidents, something, something like that. Yeah, so let's try again. And looking much better. It's still under elevated. Part of the problem is, is it, it, it is quite nose heavy. Ah! Come here. I'm throwing it all over the place, making a mess. Alright. Let's try once more. Oh, there we go. That's what you want to see. That's beautiful. That actually flies really nicely. You can see the, the flaps move quite a bit, but looking beautiful. Right. I already put a dent in the leading edge. That's what I get for flying it in the house. That's probably from one of those first test launches. Anyway. I'll try one more. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Alright. So, I still think it's nose heavy. So, what we can do is I'll get some clay and I'm going to put some clay back on the tail. We'll see how it flies like that and then we'll uh, remove weight from the nose to compensate because that's the best way to do that. All right, so I tacked a little piece of clay right there to uh, move the CG back just a tiny bit. Now we'll see how, how it flies. Oh, it stalls a little bit. Let's see if we can take some of that stab incidence out just a tiny bit. And let's see what it does now. Okay, so now I don't want to get into this too much in the house, but we will do a uh, stability check here to make sure that with that much incidence removed, it still is happy. And Caleb, can you please not do that? Thank you. All right. Hard toss, and it does go terminal. So the um we may actually let me um try one thing that might alleviate that we can wash out the tips and it should improve so be right back all right so what we're gonna do here let me turn the camera around and stay put camera stop that so we've got our wing tip here, and what I'm going to do, since I crack this loose, I'm just going to glue it at a pretty abrupt angle here. And we will wipe as much glue off as possible. You can see where to... Fairly um, 
abrupt angle right there. Like that. And do the same thing on the other side. that change, let's see how she goes. And I lost my piece of clay I had that goes back here at the tail. Alright, so that should alleviate some of that problem. Alright, and not completely, and I'll put another dent in it. It's a little better, but the bottom line is we definitely need a good bit of positive incidence, or negative incidence, I should say. Yep. So, that is what you want right there. That's a positive recovery. Now, we are going straight. So, let's make it stop going so straight. That should make us a happy airplane. So then. And, thunk, thunk. So, it's looking good. So, we'll stop there. We will reconvene the trimming at a uh, better location. Um, but that's your, your basic flight prep until you get it to a gym and do all the full launching and whatnot. So, let's see here, we'll turn around here. Okay, so, uh, bottom line, this is the Super Cat's Meow, or whatever it is we're calling it at the time. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, and um, proceed to the, the full flight trimming video, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.